Today on the Lazy Subwoofer Repairs channel, we have the power module out of a Canton AS15SC uh, subwoofer. This is a tiny little thing, I think it's a six, six inch drive in a reasonably sized cabinet. It's, it's one of those weird uh, solutions where it's just a hole and the actual driver doesn't couple straight to the air. So it's probably going to be a boomy piece of trash, but it's broken and I'm lazy and I feel like getting a cheap kick out of getting this thing running. It's a roughly $300 sub when new and it, well, it certainly doesn't feel like it. Uh, so the symptom on it uh, today is that uh, it will turn on, draw about six watts sitting in standby and make a slight amount of noise uh, without actually producing any audio on the input. So if we turn it on, you might be able to hear a bit of a groan coming out of it and none of the knobs do anything uh, input signal does nothing if I poke around the signals they'll try to shove something in there just stays quiet uh, but the PA is working because it has this little chip amp right at the corner of the board if I poke around here I can cause DC offsets and horrible popping the speaker. So that's a decent uh, working power amplifier. So the issue is going to be if there's uh, even no signal or very oscillatory, noisy, horrible signal coming into it. Now the uh, noise coming out of the speaker is quite loud. If I put my hand on my test speaker cone right here, I shot it. I can actually feel it moving around with the noise. So it uh, it sounds like pink whitish noise. It's a bit uh, if uh, there's some weird oscillation going on in the preamp, or if it's just a very very noisy preamp by design. Uh, with a uh, subwoofer with this design, the noise floor of the amplifier really doesn't matter since the driver is uh, enclosed in a box from all directions. So you. It's going to take a fair amount of uh, sound level to actually produce anything audible. So I'm not really sure how to call this as of yet. Uh, this particular board does not suffer from the yellow conductive goop, which is a refreshing change when it comes to these cheaper subwoofer power amplifier modules. Although it does have some horrible Yukon branded caps and uh, cheaper Chinese potentiometers and a general yuckiness all around. Uh, I have actually given this a bit of a try uh, at an attempted repair before. I was messing around some op amps and uh, didn't really get anywhere, put perhaps an hour at most into it before I just figured out, fuck it, it's not worth doing right now, but it's come around, so let's see if we can get this thing making some noise. So since we can be reasonably confident for the power amplifier circuit and space supply and so forth is okay, the obvious point is of course to start measuring voltages for other things. Now I can see I've already had a dig around this op amp right in the corner. Last time I was t playing with this thing, I don't remember what I was doing, measuring around probably. Uh, but uh, I just had a peek at the supply voltage for the op amps, these are standard two channel op amps, three of them, and if we measure the supply voltage across those pins, if I can get my hands in without shorting everything, we've got 6.6 .6 volts, which is rather low, these usually run on plus minus 15 or so, it could be low, these are actually uh, MC33178 op amps, which run down to plus minus 2 volts, so uh, that is within their specification. However, if we measure both rails reference to ground, we have a positive rail of 7.3 volts and a negative rail of 0.67 volts. So we've obviously got an issue with the negative rail. Uh, that is, I would wager, it's open circuit. So the next obvious thing we have what looks to be a some kind of dual supply here uh, with two chokes. Measure across this one 
open circuit, or rather 9 volts of drop across it. The other one, no drop. These are 110 micro Henry chokes. I think if we just short across this choke, this thing's going to start running again. I can't believe I didn't find this the last time around. I feel entirely stupid now. Oh, there we go. Uh, quite suitable. I even had some uh, random chokes lying around from a previous project. So we've got the entirely wrong 22 micro Henry choke installed there, but it's better than just uh, using a jumper wire. We've got something there to filter out whatever we're trying to filter out. So let's just turn our power and see uh, if uh, our op amp supply voltage is back or if they've uh, if the choke failed due to an overcurrent situation. This one's much harder though, so it's gonna survive. There we go, power on. Is it drawing as much power? Do we have a signal? And would you listen to that? So that is a fix. Jeez, I feel like an idiot right now. How could I not have spotted that earlier? I must have been very, very sleep deprived doing doing it last time. But let's see what our voltages are now. We've got negative eight volts and probably positive eight volts. Yeah, close enough. That's a decent supply voltage for these amps. It's not drawing a ridiculous amount of power. Six watts sitting idle. So, let's put this thing back together and see if it sounds any less bad than the previous subwoofers we've fixed. Oh, and in case you're curious, the amplifier chip in this is an ST-TDA 7296, which is an actually quite decently hi-fi rated little chip. I bet does. It's going to do about 30 watts per channel cleanly, or maybe 35, 38 watts um, into a subwoofer without you noticing it clipping. So that's not a bad choice. I, I don't mind it in that that regard at all. It's one of these super protected audio, car audio related chips. So it's going to be virtually indestructible. And if you manage to break it, well, uh, you can find a new one on eBay for five dollars and shove it in. In general, the whole amplifier model on this is just going to suffer bad caps and not much else. Clearly, the m broken inductor, but hey, that's no big deal. Not a bad little construction at all. I, I don't mind this actually. It, it, it's very purpose-built. Very simple, very cheap. Mm, what a warning when disassembling this thing. There's actually no polarity marking at all on the speaker terminals. The only reason I can figure out red supposed to go there is because there's a tiny bit of red plastic stuck to that terminal. Ew. That's not very nice. All right, let's hear how this thing sounds. Power on. Absolutely dreadful. I don't like subwoofers. I really do not like subwoofers, but uh, hey, at least it works. It's no longer a brick, so thank you for watching. That's how you fix this particular issue on the Canton AS15, whatever its name, subwoofer. Cheerio! That's bird poop.